With a powerful storm set to hit Southern California, communities near the recent wildfire burn scars are on high alert. Heavy rain over these scorched landscapes can trigger dangerous mud flows and debris flows, posing a serious risk to homes still standing in those areas, roads and infrastructure. Joining me now is USGS research hydrologist Jason Keene to help me break it down. Thanks for joining me, Jason. Sure thing. Well, with our heaviest rainfall coming in, We've been on high alert for the potential of debris and mud flows in our burn scar regions. What makes these regions so vulnerable to these flows? Yes, well, Southern California is kind of the world hotspot for these, these type of events. Um, you've got this combination of super steep topography, frequent wildfires, and population next, next to the mountain front. And... Um, Really what the fire does is it, it removes that protective blanket of vegetation that help hold soil in place. That uh, soil is vulnerable to erosion. And then the heat from the fire can also make the soil not absorb water the way it used to. It can become very water repellent. And so uh, a garden variety storm, something you might see every year, can um, trigger runoff and that runoff can uh, pick up sediment, erosion, and it can bulk up into what we call a debris flow. Um, it's fast moving, uh, can carry mud all the way up to boulders. Um, and so that's something we have to be on high alert for in these recent burn areas. Now, it's hard not to remember the Montecito disaster back in 2018. Now, of course, that was a, a training thunderstorm that just stayed there for over six hours. But as we move into this storm where we have the potential of multiple inches of rainfall and a risk of thunderstorms, how can people better prepare for these events? Were there lessons learned from that disaster back in 2018? Yes, I think um, one thing that I think takeaway from that event is to really, really listen to the local authorities and really listen to the National Weather Service. The National Weather Service is closely monitoring these burn areas. They have, uh, they know the rainfall thresholds that might trigger these flows and they're comparing the forecasts and observations of rainfall to those um, thresholds. If they think they're gonna be exceeded, they'll issue a warning. That means conditions are imminent for these destructive events flows. And lo local authorities have, uh, um, are going to know where the problem areas are and knock on doors to get people out of the way in advance. So um, in Montecito, I think there's a lot of fatigue after the fire. Um, and it's hard to imagine um, these kind of uh, a giant mud flow coming through the neighborhood uh, that could mow down a house. So listen to those local authorities um, and, 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 and do what they, they ask you to do. That's the most important message. And as you said, you know, I, people are so exhausted in these regions from years after years of these fires and these burn scars, unfortunately, leave a region vulnerable, not just for the year of that wildfire, it's for many years. Why is that? Yeah, well, it's really about getting that protective cover of vegetation back over that bare soil. And, and that can take um, it, you know, it depends on if it, we stay in drought conditions, then that's going to take a longer time. And so um, really, we it's two to five years after the fire that we generally worry about. Now, the good thing is each year after the fire, um, it takes a little more rain to cause a problem. So those rainfall thresholds go up with time. Um, but we're really, we need, what we really need is that drizzle of rain that gets the vegetation back uh, and puts that cover of vegetation to keep the soil in place. Yes, definitely. And I know even the root system, there are so many things that come into play with how quickly these debris flows and these mud flows do form and then push forward. But unfortunately, as a climatologist, I know that as the earth continues to warm, we will see more extreme weather from wildfires to hurricanes. How do you see a way for people to adapt to our changing climate so we can move forward into a sustainable future together? Yeah, I think well, what we're seeing with uh, the response to these fires in Southern California, there's been a lot of different agencies coming together, working working together to really identify where are the problems going to be, and 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 how to get in the way. And I think over over the time that I've worked on this problem, um, it's been great to see how more uh, more coordination, increased awareness of the problem. 
And I think that's just gonna make us better able to respond um, to these events that, that you know, will, will happen again in the future. I completely agree, Jason. I think education is key. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.